Hello and welcome to Football to the Max. Yes, we are here. This is not the wrong show. Uh, we are relaunching the show. We should be here every Monday and Thursday from now on like we're supposed to. Just so many things uh, happening. Schedule conflicts, the summer, just taking break, all this kind of uh, things that happen sometimes. But, uh, you know... We also had to delay this because Randy's over here crying about his Jets, so... I'm not crying. And, uh, I just know that I will be watching The Red Zone in 2017. Not crying at all. I'm ready. Wait, are you trying to say yeah, that you're you not... You have to understand. You guys have to understand. In basketball, I'm a Knicks fan. So a couple shitty years for the for the Jets is going to be nothing compared to what I've had to live through through the Knicks. So I'm I'm fine with rooting for a shitty team. Lots of Nick news while we've been gone, too. So, thankfully, this is not a basketball show. We might be here two hours talking about the Knicks. So, but, uh, people people want to know why I became such a fantasy football player. Because <laughs> I root for the Jets. I, mean, I have to have something to root for that actually wins. Hey, you know, so, some Jet players actually produce one in uh, fantasy football, so you still have that. But, uh, you know, we're, we're doing something different. Uh, starting now, we are going to have sort of a rotating panel uh, in order to make sure that we can do the show more regularly. We're going to try to do this at the normal time that we tried to do this last year of after the games are over, doing these shows and not waiting until the wee hours of the morning uh, because, hey, we don't need to have one show replacing the other. So, Mr. Eric Watkins that you hear... Uh, with me on Soccer to the Max every week. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he also has his own show on the W2 Network called One of Viewer. And if you're, this is your first introduction to Eric, the man uh, knows his sports, very opinionated. So we might get into some uh, nice debates here. How are you doing, Mr. Eric? Well, as a Jaguars and Dolphins fan, I can say I'm doing a little bit better than Randy, but as my brother told me, dude, pick a winner. I I, Really? Just really? (laughs) Well, you know, we all can't be, we all can't be the Cowboys and be winners. So. Uh, mm. At at least Sean has one team. I'll make sure to make fun of you for having two teams that hurt, but that's okay. (laughs) <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, think about it. The Jaguars came at a very formidable time in my life as I was nine when they came into the NFL. But by the time I got to my teenage years and other teams were coming into town and everybody was winning a title but them and being a bit of a sports historian that I am, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Well, I mean, you're also of the age when you remember when the Jaguars didn't exist, so you had to have a team, and the Dolphins were around. Very, very true, and the Dan Marino jersey hanging in my closet right now is evidence of that. Plus, we get great knowledge of how it is to be a Jacksonville fan that actually lives in Jacksonville. (laughs) 
oh, we're a dying breed. <laughs> among other <laughs> among other things, which uh, I'm not drunk enough to fully discuss and unleash now. So, yeah. <laughs> oh God, can't wait till we have a show where he is drunk, <laughs> but. Uh, but still, you know, might be after one of those like Greg Porter slows like six interception games or something, uh, which maybe we'll have a when we get to the AFC South for what we're doing. We will have some kind of game for how many Blake Bortles interceptions we're gonna have. Oh God! See, this is the kind of reason why I need weed to become recreationally legal or decriminalized because. My liver can only handle so much watching him play. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we're going to do as a series uh, until... Well, it'll be through the preseason games, but until the season starts, we're going to have uh, four questions that we're going to ask uh, for each team. And we'll get to those when we get to that part. Of course, we'll go through some news. There's not been a whole lot. Uh, I guess we might as well start with the big Derek Carr extension. Obviously, he deserves the money, but damn, that's a lot of money. Ka-ching. And don't get started about, oh, that's a lot of money. Have you seen NBA contracts nowadays? So let's just simmer down well, the teeny I meant the, for the NFL. <laughs> we know what the NBA contracts are. Yeah, but I mean, even still, everybody looks at the big number, and the big number is following that trend. Everybody looks at the annual number. The annual number is following that trend. But as real NFL contract junkies know, and those that are more into the business side of things, look at the not-so-big number, the guaranteed number, and at $40 million, I'm fine with that, personally. Well-earned, and the Raiders did themselves at least a reasonable favor, not front-loading too much, giving themselves flexibility, especially with the impending move to Vegas. This works. Randy, you had uh, some doubt when uh, this went down about what... No, I... I, I, my doubt went in a different direction. I think Derek Carr deserved every penny, especially exactly what Eric said. You know, you're moving to Vegas. Derek Carr has put the Raiders back on the map. I mean, they were a laughing stock for a while. He has been a major reason why they are relevant and, you know, playoff contenders. And they can see that happening for years to come. And listening to Derek Carr's press conference after the fact, I, I don't think it could have come to a nicer guy. I, I think he's a very humble person. I don't think the money's going to change him. Uh, he wanted to make sure that, yes, even though he's getting paid all this money, it wasn't going to affect some of his friends on the team getting theirs and wanted to make sure that all of a sudden the team wasn't going to have to fall apart because they paid Carr too much. Yes, I mean, the guaranteed money being low is great, and it kind of protects Oakland if some catastrophic injury happens. I mean, God forbid and Derek Carr can't live up to this contract. But, again, he's a face of a franchise getting ready to move to a new location. You have to make sure he's well off. The thing that I had doubts for was, okay, well, Derek Carr's getting this money, so now everyone else, like Stafford and Cousins, are guaranteed to get this kind of money. It's, it's completely different situations. Oh, God. <laughs> and, and, I mean, to me, so, so here's the thing. It, it is, I, I would not be surprised if we now hear... Stafford gets one more dollar than Carr or a couple million more. I mean, because that's just the way teams work and the way, obviously, that's where agents are now going to put their their limit at first. Is like, okay, well, Carr got this. We want this. Yeah, but if I'm Detroit, and even though I'm a big Stafford fan, you know, he's a little bit older. He does have a lot of injury history. I'm not paying him that. And if he won't sign without paying that, he can go somewhere else. And we, we can help find him a new home. And I'm not going to cripple my franchise who Stafford has not gotten us to anywhere just to make sure that he gets paid, like Derek Carr money. Yes, he deserves to get paid more than he is, but 
I don't look at it as like, well, this guy got paid this much, so now that that's just a standard fare. I mean, if we went by that, then I mean, how much did Jay Cutler get paid? Uh, Tom Brady should be paid five times that. Ooh, you don't well, even Tom, get Tom Brady doesn't Jay Cutler wanna... deal. <laughs> I mean, Tom Brady doesn't care about that. He's got so much money. He yeah. just wants to make sure the team's okay. Yeah, and that's what I would tell Stafford. Do you want to be on a winning team or a team that's going to pay you a lot of money? And if he says I want a lot of money, then ship him off to Cleveland. Ouch. Oh, I, I want to say something so bad, but in that split second, no, nah, you're right. And Cleveland would gladly be the Browns and pay him that exorbitant money. And personally, do you see? Now, with this being not so much the standard, but as I said, following the trend, Mm -hmm. I look at quarterbacks that you just mentioned, Stafford and Cousins. I wouldn't be surprised if Detroit tried once in some situation, whenever they could, do like what Washington has done, done to Cousins the past couple of years, which they've played his contract situation Horribly. Yes. We know what Cousins is capable of. I saw him at Michigan State. I've seen him at Washington. I'm thinking, I'm not going to put all of my eggs in his basket. It's just something that I've never been able to put my finger on because of what I'm seeing despite the stats. So they really, if they didn't want to pay him, which they shouldn't, they should have found a way to get rid of him because at some point they're going to be like Detroit forced to pay him an even more exorbitant amount of money. But going back, Detroit yeah. could potentially manipulate a franchise tag somehow to buy themselves some time to kick the can with Stafford. They shouldn't, but they might. Well, they, you know, Stafford's a little bit older, and he mm-hmm. has the injury history that Kirk Cousins doesn't have. So, And he, you know, he got hurt last year, where mm-hmm. he was incredibly, he was not the same quarterback after he, you know, hurt his hand. So, no. you know, if that happens again, they can say, look, man, we can't pay you that much money. You have an injury history this long. Like, no way. You know, mm-hmm. if, if you want to go find somebody else to pay you that money, fine, but we're, you're not getting it here. So, you know, and Kirk Cousins, you're right, but I I, I kind of understand their point is that I think the first year they were right, show me. Let's do it again. But, but you know, but they also, it, he's doing a lot with not having a great running game and, and all the stuff the Redskins, have, you know, don't have. They have a great offense. Uh, but, you know, he, they, he's gotten guys go down to, you know, Jordan Reed, I don't know how many times he got hurt. So, you know, can he do it again like that with the team losing more pieces? And personally, this may be where the bottom falls out. If he can easily go out and prove me wrong, have even 80 to 90% of the season that he had last year without those pieces like you mentioned. If he does that, I will shut up. I will. And you know my history with going up to D.C. and doing things. I would march right into Snyder's office myself and say, hey, if someone like me thinks you should pay this guy, you should pay this guy. But then if he doesn't do that, I'm like, ah, he got to go. I agree with you there. I mean, if he can do that again, the dude deserves the money. I, I don't think there's any case you can make where he doesn't. Continues to work with less and continues to put up mm-hmm. these numbers. I mean... It is what it is for the guy. Just yeah, it dang. is what it is. It is what it is for Cousins, and it is what it is for Dan Snyder to really check himself and see how he really wants to run this organization. Well, speaking of deals, Aaron Donald still waiting on his deal. Due to set to make one point eight million on his rookie contract that's left through this year, or well, through next year. Obviously, he deserves money. Uh, Mm -hmm. He's been the guy for them on the defensive side. 
of that line. But Tremaine Johnson hasn't signed his franchise tag either, so Rams a little worried. You think the deal gets done here, or they, or they have to end up waiting this out? I think because of a lot of different priorities that they had, because let's just say the Rams have had a couple nebulous seasons the past couple of years and a lot of major decisions made, but if you're asking me what I want to see, I want this deal to be done because offense, let's just say it's a ways away from being relevant or even achieving mediocrity. Defensively, he's one of their major pieces, as you just said. I would want to see this done to help continue a show of at least stability and say, hey, we are trying to build and lock some things down a bit at a time, but if I'm looking at it from a realistic perspective, with how the Rams go, it's not happening anytime soon. No, I, I don't think it happens this year as much as Donald wants it to. Just when you look at the numbers, there's what? They have under $5 million left in their cap right now, and they have $50 million coming off of the books after this year. Now, I was trying to get this a load of my internet's being slow as, as far as who's coming off of the books after this year. But if I'm the Rams, I go, listen, we really want to pay you. You deserve it. We just don't have it right now. You be patient and wait one year, we're going to have a lot of money available. And they've paid their quarterback. Goff's paid. So you're going to get yours. We, we just don't have it at the moment. But I mean, you be the good little soldier, I guess, and you're going to become a very, very wealthy man. It's just you look at the numbers, and it's not there for the Rams right now. Yeah, I mean, and good on him for not holding out. He's still training and, and doing everything. So he's... Like you said, being the model guy, and I agree with you. You you look at that number and you're going, that's that's a rough to to say we're paying him. Uh, they had to franchise tag Jermaine Johnson, which I'm sure they wanted to pay him too. But you know, can't lose. They already lost. Uh, was it Janoris Jenkins last year? Can't lose both guys uh, back no. there. No, no, and it's kind of sad that 1.8 million because. One point eight million in California does not go that far. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Once you, you know, assuming that you're paying your taxes and not being Cristiano Ronaldo and not. Hey, paying, hey, so. this is California, not Spain. Two different places on two different continents. I'm just saying. You know, <laughs> we as like Americans, we don't have pay Americans paying. <laughs> there's people. There's Americans that don't pay their taxes. You know? And they wind up in jail. Look at Wesley Snipes. That's true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> David Irving found out he is going to be suspended for four games if the Cowboys needed any more defensive, you know, people not being around. Uh, this really hurts. The, yeah, I know he was a guy that wasn't an every down defensive lineman, but he was a guy that when they needed something to happen – you put him in the game, and he was making stuff happen over on the, whether it was the left or the right. Being out four games is not going to help this Cowboys defense. Has now gotten really young, and also just losing everybody in that secondary, which was a big part of that that team last year. Yeah, this completely kills the season for Dallas. Sorry. I uh, yeah, I don't know about. <laughs> I'm I'm joking, totally joking. Well, we'll see, you know. Maybe uh, Dak doesn't have the incredible year because of that defense losing people. Oh, but he got rated, what, like the 11th best player in the league? Whoa, whoa, huh? <laughs> what did he finish up in that ra- that ranking? Hold on. Uh, he wasn't top 10 because I just saw it. Uh, hold on. Well, uh, as I keep going, so... Eric, as a fan of the U, former U player here, uh, Artie Burns. Uh, How do you, this, Hold on. Okay. So it's been a year, a year of you being 
in the league and you know you have a suspended license and you don't get that figured out? Okay. I mean, okay. I will say this. How Miami operates, how hurricanes have operated since the 80s, you don't take care of a lot of things yourself. You have an entourage. You pay someone in your entourage, and hopefully they take care of it for you. Apparently, some words were not said, some things were not done, and this was not taken care of. Oh, this... why? Just when we had finally shed at least a little bit of that reputation of stupidity, this... this hurts. This hurts. Uh, I hate hearing stories of this because it's just like, come on. Just come on with this. This this is preventable. This is entirely preventable. I completely agree with you. And this... And what is it? I mean, why is it that Miami... And Miami athletes and athletes connected to Miami do incredibly stupid things in interactions with police officers and driver's licenses. I mean, has he learned nothing from the story of Pete Worrell? Apparently not. Uh, So, to uh, clear this up, Ezekiel Elliott was number seven. And Dak Prescott was number 14. Okay, be honest. That's ridiculous, right? Yes, I said that. Okay, I know. I just wanted you to say it on the podcast. Oh, and Aaron Donald is one behind Prescott at 15. So, uh, but this is by the players, right? So the players are ranking these guys. So let's just do this just for fun. So Tom Brady is number one. Uh, I don't think you can really, you know, doubt that at no, this point. At still, still, even if you it. don't like him like I don't, you have to respect him. He's right, greatest quarterback of all time. I want to kick him in the face with Ugg boots so bad for the glory, and it hates me. It hurts me just as much to say this, but yes, I. What he's done, it makes me want to throw things and punch people, but. The man arguably just wins a lot. So here, so here are the people that are ahead of Ezekiel Elliott. Tom Brady, Von Miller, Julio Jones, Antonio Brown, Khalil Mack, Aaron Rodgers. Then behind Ezekiel Elliott and before Dak Prescott, you have Odell Beckham Jr., Le'Veon Bell, Matt Ryan, Derek Carr, David Johnson, Eric Berry, the Chiefs' safety, and then Dak. I have a minor qualm about Matt Ryan because, yeah, even what he did this past season, and I'm pretty sure that's what bumped him up in the players' eyes, I mean, oh, it, it's not it's not there for me for him. There, there hasn't been a whole lot of there there in his career. And heck, I would put Tyron Smith ahead of Dak. If we're talking about Cowboys, and he's at 18. I will say this. Your two Cowboy boys are not the only two that got completely highly overrated on this list. So, Yeah, that's true. I can't be too mad. Now, Richard Sherman at 21, stop it. <laughs> so, oh, A couple I years wanna... ago, yes. A couple years ago, yeah. 21, well, yeah. Russell, Wilson, re- Russell Wilson, 24, stop it. Okay, even, well, say say if they were 31 and 34, would that have been better in your eyes? No, Richard Sherman's not top 50 anymore. Mm. I agree mm. with you. He's not. He's okay, really going okay. to have to say, a, after, after Like, Landon Collins had a way so better good. year than him. Yeah, I've got to concede uh, that one. I'll concede that one. <laughs> is Big Ben still the number 22 player in the league at this point? I don't know about that. What? Well, uh, ooh, mm. What? <laughs> wow. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, look, this is players, and you got to remember, players don't sit here and watch things like, you know, like we do and, and writers do and all that. They don't have time to sit there and, and watch Red Zone and all that. So Well, that, well then yeah. that brings about the question of why you ask them in the first place, but I've already got fun. enough professional. Because this is a cool thing for the NFL football. to do in the offseason. Like I said, I've got enough professional sports leagues potentially mad at me. I, I don't want to get knocks on the door from the shield. Not yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm just happy that they didn't rank Marshawn Lynch at all. Thank God. Well, why would they rank Marshawn Lynch? This is from last year. Because all I'm hearing from Raiders fans around here is how Marshawn Lynch is going to sit and take them to the Super Bowl. And Seahawks fans going, oh, my God, we gave up such a great running back. What? Overrated. Overrated. That's gonna, they did, running back. Latavius Murray didn't like light the world on fire last year, and they still did great because of Derek Carr, the offensive line, and yeah. the receivers. This uh, is just I mean, giving Derek Carr another weapon in their offense, another tool to play no, with. Not even a weapon. Don't get me started on Marshawn Lynch and the overrated. Uh, yeah. <laughs> look, look, the the I, man. I'm, the man went in a charity soccer match and re and reenacted William Webb Ellis inventing rugby right there on the pitch for everybody to see. Okay, that gives him points in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, but you take those points away when his whole shtick, which I will give him credit for in the long run, because it was pretty much brilliant. But it drove me nuts at the time because, again, I live in the Northwest, so all I heard was sympathy. was that whole thing, I'm only here because I don't want to get fined. I don't want to talk to the media and all of this BS. And, oh, he's just a shy guy. And, oh, just leave him alone. And the moment it retires, he's on every show you've ever seen. But no. You're... He got his name out there by having this quote. And then all the media wanted to do was be a part of it. It was brilliant. But in the Northwest, I couldn't handle it. Yeah, but there'd be, you just said it yourself. He did one thing. He's like, I can have this and go viral. This helps me out, and I get to be in commercials where I don't have to say anything whatsoever. That's perfect strategy, marketing-wise nowadays. For Marshawn Lynch, I get it. Respect to him. Living in the Northwest, could not stand it. Because nobody understood it. I knew what he was doing when he was doing it. So did I, yeah. <laughs> but in the Northwest, oh, you guys are, the media is just picking on Marshawn Lynch. They're just being mean. No, they're they're falling into his trap. And he made a lot of money. And then all of a sudden, you know what? All that glimmer on of that quote and the viralness started going away. So guess what? Lynch is back. That's why he's coming back. It's not for the love of the game. He has nothing better to do anymore, and he's not going to be great. He's over 30. He's missed a year. Do you really think he's going to top 1,000 yards? Mm, no, I would probably put him in the maybe sevens or eights. I guarantee when I do fantasy drafts this year, again, living in the Northwest, Marshawn Lynch is going to go in the first three rounds. Oh, and I know, know it. I'm you know going to gut roll. Is. Every time. Oh, oh, trust me, when I'm fiddling around on FanDuel like I do, I know he's going to be incredibly overvalued, and I'm going to pass more often than not. So I'm with you there. I just, maybe because I don't live in the Northwest, I appreciate what he did in that moment. And yes, you have guys in these situations when they are opening up their wallet and flies are coming out, or whatever reason that you have, yeah, that's when they come back. I get that too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, well, let's wait and see how overrated he winds up being. So AJ Green, who's number seventeen on this list, says he is going to have a Julio Jones season next year. Oh, or this year coming up. Sorry. Um, let me tell you what's about the, that. What, what, what's Green. the best? What's the best way I can say no? St- 
stop, I feel like smacking you without actually saying those words. I need help with this. <laughs> you wonder <laughs> what goes through these minds, and I think to myself, why did I not stick with a different degree and become a therapist? How much money I could get from these people? Or just why can't they pay me to be a life coach or just to be their friend for a few months? Because I need to sit down and have talks with a lot of these people. Well, props to him for having confidence in himself, for one. Confidence and a slight bit of delusion. He did do pretty well last year. All things considered, with them, you know, changing receivers and more focus being on him and everything. But Randy, you think he can have a Julio Jones season? Sorry, I had a kid walk in. Who are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> AJ Green says he can have okay. a Julio Jones season. Yeah, who's his quarterback again? Andy Dalton. Yeah. Okay. No, you can't. You can't have that kind of a season. <laughs> See, Randy, we're right. gonna get along just fine after all. But well, it was funny. I, I I had to mute the mic and stuff so I could okay to answer his question. I came back and Eric's going on this rant. I'm just waiting for him to say exactly what he was ranting about so I could just jump in. <laughs> but, no, I like AJ Green. I think he's a great player. Uh, he's not in the right situation, especially since. You know, like Sean did bring up, a lot of things have changed as far as wide receiver weapons. And now all you, that's all you have to do is guard him. All right, and the running game, even in, in Cincinnati, has completely fallen off. So it, it really is all on him. Julio Jones became Julio Jones because of what he had around him. I mean, he had Roddy White for years. And then, oh, look, that new guy that used to be with A.J. Green went to, to Atlanta. And Julio Jones became... Far superior. So, uh, A.J. Green, to me, is not on the level of Jones. Agree there. If he had a better quarterback, maybe he could do it. But just uh, not see it, not seeing it happening uh, for the season here. So, the last thing, just because he made me laugh at this, uh, choosing this song quote here. Martellus Bennett has been, uh, you know, a lot of Packers fans have been saying that, oh, he's a downgrade over, of course, probably a lot of this is also because he's a former Bear. So who knows how much of it is the fact that he's coming over from Chicago or that they really believe he's a downgrade from Jared Cook. So he was asked this question by uh, the Good Morning Football show, and he says, I'm not a downgrade from anyone. I'm like Beyonce. Let me upgrade you. You know, Martellus, sometimes, sometimes I, I understand why you got cut from the Cowboys. You just, you say some Mar of the dumbest things. Martellus, the Beehive cannot help you. They will not help you. They are not your personal army. Shh. It's okay. Well, the the, the <laughs> the funny thing is, I agree with Bennett. <laughs> not the way he said it. Yeah. Not great. But look, you have Aaron Rodgers who holds on to the ball for 38 seconds every play, right? Right. Until somebody finally gets open. And Jared Cook could only catch 30 passes. I, I re There have been some really good tight ends in Green Bay because Aaron Rodgers will wait and wait and wait and wait and then finally look for somebody and who better to go to than a big tight end so yeah now you have Bennett who caught 55 passes I mean yes some of it was because Gronk was also on the field but Gronk got hurt and Bennett was still fine I think he will fit well in that situation is he a great tight end no but I think he will fit in better than Cook did and with what Aaron Rodgers does I think he will be just fine Heck, he played well with Jay Cutler throwing to him. So now that, he also didn't he do a ranking of quarterbacks, and Jay Cutler wasn't last on the quarterbacks <laughs> that have thrown to him. 
Probably because he couldn't do it. I have an issue with. I want to know who would be last if Jay Cutler wasn't. Well, it wasn't Romo, but he might have, you know, also, he didn't get on the field much then, so that he might have had a problem. But I mean... Aaron Rodgers, one. Tom Brady, two. Jay Cutler, three. Eli Manning, four. Tom Brady, five. Tom Brady, twice? Huh? Tony Romo, five, sorry. Oh. Tony Romo was... Ooh. Oh. Uh, oh, man. Martellus? Uh, that's Martellus. just being angry at the Cowboys, and, I think. And, and listen, I understand that he is now on the Packers, so of course he wants to put Aaron Rodgers first. And I don't think Rodgers is quite above Tom Brady yet. No. No. But if I he, understand why he ranked him that way. Hey, so Tom Brady to keeps Brownie, winning championships. Yeah, I mean, yeah, trying to get Brownie points, fine, because that way, instead of catching 40 passes, you'll be in a position to catch 50, but... <laughs> also, maybe. sorry, also, I just realized that he ranked the quarterbacks based on the timeline that he played with him. He played with oh. Romo first, then Eli, then Jay Cutler, then Tom Brady, then Aaron Rodgers. So maybe he was just avoiding the question. But still, it's hilarious to me. There are better ways to avoid questions, especially if you're a Patriot. That's all I'm saying. Well, thank you for that wonderful segue there, Eric. So let's get to our questions that we're going to ask for each team. This week we are doing the AFC East, and since we're restarting, we got to start with Randy's Jets, and we're also talking about the champion New England Patriots, which that might be a short segment because they have not done a, too much this off season. I love that we're starting with two teams on the same level. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you make jokes about your own team, Randy. I have to. Yeah, I was as about a Jets to fan, say, you have to. I was about to say, I could have sworn I heard crickets for a second there. <laughs> but, all right. So, let's start with Randy's Jets. Coming into this season, how did the team... Did, how did the team get better? One One way the team got better. Um, they got rid of Chan Gailey. There you go. Oh, you don't that, like that's Chan how they Gailey? got better. No, I don't think it fits. Uh, and and honestly, this is this is what my answer is going to be a lot for the Jets. They rebuilt. They understood that they took that shot. They went out there and, and got the Marshals and the Deckers and the, the veteran leadership on offense. They have built a really good defense in New York. But they went out there and, and got veteran leadership with those two, with Matt Forte. You know, they got lucky with Fitzpatrick having that that lightning in the bottle two years ago. Obviously, it, it did not last last season. Um, but they they hit it. They were one game away from making the playoffs. Everything was looking great. All of a sudden, everything's kind of falling apart. So they've hit the reset button. They're getting right, getting rid of a lot of veteran players who aren't going to be around by the time they are hoping this team gets going. Yes. I mean, if you look at it just on paper, getting rid of Decker and Marshall is not going to help the team, but I actually thought that some of their young wide receivers were just fine last year. I mean, you get them some extra playing time. I I thought Robbie Anderson was good. His hands could get a little bit better. I liked peak. They went out and got a couple of guys also in the draft. But I, to me, they're looking for three, four years down the line instead of now, which, I mean, you can make fun of them all you want, especially when 25 teams in the NBA are doing that. They're just, okay, we'll wait until LeBron finally stops being LeBron James, <laughs> and, and then we'll be okay. The Jets are going, at some point, Tom Brady has to retire, right? <laughs> that That year we're going to be ready for it. And that's okay because even when they tried to get up to the Patriots level and made all these amazing moves. And like I 
said a couple years ago, I really thought they could be contenders as far as like getting not up to the Patriots level, but at least making it tough on them. They still missed the playoffs. So I'm okay with them stashing and doing it the right way. What do you think, Eric? I mean, I, I'm glad Randy's accepting this for how it is, and that's very good. I do get their admitting, saying, hey, be prepared for this to be maybe a notch or two above co-type for this season, but stick with this. My only fear is, if they do it right, three, four years down the road, the Jets could be a fantastic team, they're contenders, and they're another team that I'm going to have to hate, simply because an old friend of mine is going to call me pretty much every single week for six months, and I'm not going to shut him up. But knowing what I've seen from the Jets, they can start doing it right right now, but then something will happen. One, two bad moves are made, so while three, four years down the road they could be great, they could put at least one speed bump a year or two from now. And then that three, four years becomes five, six years, seven, whatever. So while I want to see them do it the right way and for them to be a laughing stock so that way neither of my teams are, <laughs> I don't want them to screw up the process so they can not be a laughing stock. Uh, I think they got better through the draft. Uh, drafting Jamal Adams and Marcus Mays as your two safeties, and you're already hearing great things from Jamal Adams in training camp now, as uh, Todd Bowles is, is talking about it, was an absolute win for them. Uh, you know, I think our Darius Stewart's going to work out for them. Jordan Leggett might be their first tight end that actually does something for the team in like forever. Stop it. It's, they ignore that position. <laughs> Josh McCown does not. He's not so playing. It, Stop Josh, it with Josh McCown. Josh McCown? Josh McCown, if he is your quarterback, look what he did for Gary Barnage. Who's if not he is my quarterback, uh, I will not watch a single down of the Jets. He is there for quote unquote veteran leadership. Well, this is all Hackenberg. Right. It's it's either Hackenberg's year or they they admit defeat. The thing that has drove me nuts. Wait, all so Bryce long, Petty is not? No, he's already went out there and he tried. Sorry, we're, we, <laughs> they moved on. I moved on. Sorry, Bryce Petty. Even though he was supposed to be a three four, this is what drove me mad with the Jets for the last couple of years. They go out and get Bryce Petty. They say he is a two to three to four year project. Halfway through the year, they're like, oh, let's get Bryce Petty out there. Why isn't Bryce Petty playing? He must be terrible. No, they knew he, they had to completely change his system. So then the next year, in the second round, they go out and get Christian Hackenberg, who was supposed to be a two to three year project. But because the Jets sucked last year, everyone went, well, why isn't Hackenberg going out there? Because he's not ready. Bryce Petty definitely wasn't ready, and they threw him out there, and just as I expected, he was terrible, and now everyone's just done with him. Everyone's saying that, okay, well, the Jets are just going to tank, and they're going to get the number one pick, and they're going to draft a quarterback. Hold on. Their game plan, if they stick with it, was to get Hackenberg, and in a couple years, he was going to be, hopefully, their starter of the future. To me, this is a big selling point. This is the time you throw Hackenberg out there. And if they suck, that's fine as long as he is showing improvement throughout the year and that is all based on practices and how they feel about him. I have no problem with the Jets going out there 2-14, and 14, getting the number one pick, and then trading it away for somebody that wants that next big quarterback and getting a huge haul. No problem with that. Right. Or if I they hope think for you that's what they're doing. Or if they think Hackenberg, that he goes out there and just he's not learning, he's not picking anything up, then, yes, you'd use that top draft pick for that quarterback that I would, that 
you know he'll be going number one because that's what happens anymore anyways. So I, I like what they're doing. It's just, I'm not jumping off the ledge because, oh, Bryce Petty and Hackenberg just haven't worked out. Look at that. Like, I knew they were projects. I hated that we got Hackenberg because Bryce Petty was supposed to be that quarterback of the future. And Josh McCown is, is there just in case everything implodes. You have that veteran guy to lean on. But it's not going to matter because you're not going to contend this year. Well, my argument, I'm actually going to flip-flop. I don't mind them getting Hackenberg, but you said it yourself. Why go out and get a system quarterback? Because that's exactly what Bryce Petty was, a system quarterback with a multi-year project in mind, knowing that people are, if things stay bad, going to want to throw him to the wolves. Because they were under... Terrible leadership back then, and they got rid of a lot of it. So, I mean, new quarterback coach there, new offensive coordinator there. I mean, yes, I would still – I'm fine with Todd Bowles. I like him as a head coach. They just need an offensive coach. And they went the defensive route too many times lately, and offense has been their issue. I would like them to get an offensive – minded head coach and see what he could do with this team because the defense is fine and as long as they don't blow it up should be fine for the next four or five years so get new minds out there see what you can do with these pieces I, i'm with sean i like the jamal adams pick may is fine but go defense defense confused me a little bit we'll kind of see on on stewart and hansen the thing i didn't like about their draft in general and I think I talked about it when we were doing our, our draft recaps and stuff, is the Jets went, well, we'll just do what the Patriots do, and we'll just trade out, and we'll trade down, and we'll trade down, and we'll trade down, and we'll stock up picks. But what the Patriots do is they stock up those picks, and then they turn them into something. The Jets stocked up their picks and then ended up with, like, 87 sixth-round picks. <laughs> like, it, it, it felt like every other pick in the sixth round was the Jets. <laughs> You're not going to rebuild your team on a bunch of six-round picks. It's You get all of these six-round picks, and then you take three of them and pass them on to move up to a fourth-round pick. And then you take a fourth-round pick and a sixth-round pick, and you move that into a third-round pick. That's what the Patriots do. It's not, oh, we have 20 six-round picks. What do we do with them? Ah, oh, we use them all. I like to point out that Randy said they had 87 <laughs> six-round picks, and then now they have 20. <laughs> Well, hey, you never know what compensatory rules. I mean. Yeah, it's true. They could have they could have a hundred, but the, no, the, the Jets had it would have eighty seven six round picks, but would forget it's their turn. The timer would run out, and it would move on. So they yeah. would lose sixty seven of them. So <laughs> hey, five minutes goes by a lot faster than you think. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, so, what do you think makes them? Uh, do you th- are, are those veteran moves what made them worse? Taking away all the veterans and, and later. Yeah, I go. mean, as far as 2017, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're without Marshall, you're without Decker. I mean, that was your offense. And again, I like some of the, the young wide receivers that the Jets have. I didn't even say a Nunwa. I really like a Nunwa. Mm-hmm. Um, but none of them are number one guys. And they still have a lot to prove. So I don't see the offense doing well. I mean, obviously, by the time the Jets are any good, you're not going to have Forte around. But you're, that's what you're going to be doing is, is leaning on Forte and Powell to kind of shoulder the load for hopefully a Hackenberg out there. And hopefully his whole goal is not to make mistakes and learn. And you're relying on defense. But if you're going just – Based on record, what made them worse? Yeah, absolutely. Is is they got rid of veteran leadership for future hopefuls. You going in a different direction, Eric? Or you kind of agree with? No, I, I I agree with Randy in tying into what I want to see from them as it goes into training camp. You're now committed to being terrible if this is your grand plan then yes you're intentionally going to get worse and be terrible let's hope for the best but even with the 
new coordinator and all these things, how are they going to cobble together an offense so that way you can give Christian Hackenberg something to learn and something to eventually build from? That's what I would love to see because you're truly starting with next to nothing. Okay, off you go. Yeah, and I can kind of see that where you're coming from. You want to give them some pieces to throw to. Mm-hmm. I, I know that's always been the issue with the Jets. All right, listen, what I'm going to say, I'm going to put a caveat on it. No, Mark Sanchez is not a good quarterback. Has never been a good quarterback, and I never thought he was. But he didn't have any pieces to throw to either. So fair. That's, that's fair. But, fair statement. <laughs> but he wasn't good. Uh, he was put in the perfect situation with a great defense and, and whatever. But... Yes, you would like to have had a Decker there. I, I don't think having Brandon Marshall with a young quarterback is going to work. Because I don't want my young quarterback having a veteran come up. Just throw me the ball. Because that's just going to get him into bad habits. And that's mm-hmm. why why Stafford took that step forward once Calvin Johnson left. To me. I thought Stafford became a much better quarterback when he, he lost that crutch. Well, and also the offensive had, coordinator changed too. That's fine, but he lost. How many times did Stafford go? Oh, my first read's not there. I'm just going to throw it into triple coverage because Calvin Johnson. And now, oh yeah, oh, all the time. Not there now. Not my second. Then he then he can find something. That's what I want from Hackenberg is not to go. Oh, my first read's not there. Well, Brandon Marshall has promised me that he will go up and get anything, so I'm just going to throw it to him. I, I would like to have Decker there just for the experience and, and kind of be that reliable guy. Uh, but yes, I mean, what Anunua, this will be his fourth season, and he's your most experienced wide receiver on the team. That can be a little dicey, and we'll kind of see where it goes from there. Um, but again, I, I think if you're the Jets, this is your learning year. You're just trying not to make mistakes. You, you want to play games that is first to 17 wins. They're not going to be fun to watch. Uh, whether they win or lose, which I do think they're going to lose the majority of their games. Um, but that's what it is. This is their their learning curve year. And and yes, does it make them worse this year? Sure, absolutely. But hopefully hopefully, the future is bright, but that's the problem. The future is so unknown, anything can happen. So. Yeah, I just... It, this is where I say again, like, you know, don't sleep on what these young guys could do because... You know, the young receivers will are the ones that are probably going to get uh, gel with him the most because they're all going to be playing it, you know, with that same team of, all right, well, these are the guys we've got to use. And young quarterback, what do they normally do? They might actually have to figure out how to use the tight end. And as I'm still saying, Jordan Leggett could actually do something uh, for the Jets. So <laughs> we, can only, we can only hope. Yeah, let's. Let's hope so. And hey, just one last thing. I, I know we're running really long on the Jets, but yeah, the Patriots are going to take two seconds. But I, I have True. been hearing Austin Severian Jenkins, who they traded for last year and was a complete bust and was completely out of shape. I have heard through different team reports, not insider information, of course, because I mean, I don't know shit. Uh, <laughs> but Austin Severian Jenkins looks like he's in the best shape of his life. Does that mean he's going to play great? Eh, we'll see. But potentially you could have a two tight end set, which with a talent and wide receiver, that's okay. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I think I'm. I think the most exciting thing for the the Jets, obviously, is is Hackenberg it is who's going to be doing what with the quarterback position. Uh, I think you have a few question marks outside of the obvious for the Jets, though. Is Matt Forte still going to be Matt Forte? It's another year older. You know, um, you're losing some some guys on the offensive line. Is it, is he still going to be able to provide what he provided last year with people focusing on him more because you're going to have Hackenberg there? Uh, you know, you could just decide to put everybody in the box and go. All right, Hackenberg, try to stop me. You know, try to beat us. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right. And and luckily they have Blau Powell, who is like a mini Matt Forte, 
to be honest. And still, I think one of the more underrated running backs in the league, just for the skill set that he can provide. He, I mean, not only big explosive plays, but he's great in the receiving game out of the backfield, which is, you know, the big mark for Forte is that's what he's always great at. So that's where I see them going. Yes, they're going to want to rely on Forte and Powell a lot, but they're also kind of going to be that safety net for Hackenberg. So, yeah, I mean, it's something to be excited about is just to see kind of how that young offense gels. I mean, the defense is going to be the main focus and they're going to be the best part, but we know what's there other than the young secondary, which they still need some cornerbacks for. But, yeah, it, the thing that I'm most excited for is just kind of see how this offense plays out and and if it works or not. Yeah, and I think this is a place, too, where uh, Mo Claiborne can – really flourish because he's going to be a veteran with that secondary and mm-hmm. he did really well in Dallas. Uh, of course he had the motivation to do well. Let's see what he does here with the Jets and he performs the same way. But uh, Eric, what do you think is your question mark for the Jets here? I mean, aside from the offense, because we all know that's the biggest one. Can Todd Bowles get back to at least where he was defensively so you can at least replicate Rex Ryan's mentality and maybe fall into a little bit of luck and win four or five games instead of two or three? Getting to that, okay, first to 17 wins, we can hold the other team off a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer than they can. That's what I want to see the most, because if they can't even do that, then ah, there's very little point to this season beyond going through the motions. Yeah, I think Todd Bowles is going to be a big factor of how he motivates the team. Is the team, you know, getting blowout losses... Or are they competing? You know, because that's going to be a big factor for him, too. If they're just getting blown out every game, Todd Bowles might have to be worried about, is he coaching there next season? You know, but if they're fighting and they're scrapping, whether it's Hackenberg or it's whoever is at quarterback, you know, or it does, does the ownership go to some kind of panic move and go with the veteran at some point and say, well, we got to win uh. some of these games. I hope not. I, I just want... I mean, just stick the... with the process. Just just stick with it. It's going to be rough, especially when you look at the schedule. You know, the two divisions that the Jets have to play and the entire AFC East has to play is the AFC West, which is brutal. All right, three of those teams are playoff contenders. The Chargers are getting better. That's just rough. And then you also get right. the NFC South. Same thing. Can you name one like terrible team in that division? They're all at least competent, if not great. Uh, so there's no easy marks on the schedule. Cleveland, I think, is going to improve. And they play them. They play Jacksonville, who, I mean... Lo- no, the, the, the. Again, love them or leave them with Jacksonville. <laughs> I, I jumped on the hype train last year. I'm hesitant to do it again. But don't, still, don't, there's, don't, not, there's not a team... There's not a team on that schedule where you go, well, the Jets are going to win now. And I mean, if it's 17-9 to 13-10, 20-10 every week, which realistically this is what it's going to be, then yes, ownership should trust the process. Todd Bowles should be safe. But if teams are hanging up 30, 40, 45 on you in some instances, well, you've got people wanting to rub two sticks together and throw on some gasoline underneath of that Barca lounger. They shouldn't, but they will. And I hope that the fact that it doesn't get to the situation where they don't, because Jets ownership will go into a panic. Fans will go into a panic. Media will go into a slightly lesser panic. You're right. Panic's going to be all around. But if they can do good enough to stave it off, then they will listen to you and go ahead and trust that process. 
Yeah, anything else you guys want to say on the Jets before we move on here? All right, silence is That's it. <laughs> yeah. golden. So, yeah, the Patriots, look, they won the Super Bowl. Mm. They really didn't have to do much to change <laughs> who they are. Uh, mm-hmm. They did go mm-hmm. sign a Jet and David Harris. So, uh, you know, that's one move that they made. And well, they need it, they need that insider information to be able to beat the Jets, so they had to go out and get that former player. <laughs> that's exactly. They, they can't tape anybody anymore, really. <laughs> so <laughs> that didn't work out too well. That's exactly what they needed. I mean, it seems like everybody loves Derek Rivers and a few of their other draft picks, which they basically went on both lines for their draft picks, which I think that's smart. That's where they had the problems. So they, they addressed those. I mean, Tom Brady is another year older, and he's still winning. I mean, that's how you get better, right? Like, just, I mean, he's the one saying, I'm going to play till I'm 45. Talk a lot and talk about what his wife said about concussions and everything. I'm like, ugh. At this point, you just have to okay. believe it, right, though? I mean, he keeps... I believe just... it, and I ask, how illegal would it be? And I've mentioned this on other podcasts. I mean, Tom Brady has had a leg injury before. If certain events were to happen, where a similar leg injury would occur... Would there be liability on anybody if, throughout natural circumstances, maybe with a crowbar, something doesn't occur along those lines? (laughs) Yeah, well, Matt Garoppolo is just going to lead him to the Super Bowl and then somebody will pay him $300 million because they're going to think he's the next great thing. Okay, Uh, so... So we have to do that to him, too. I mean, they still have Jacoby Brissett, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah. Okay, so then you do it twice, and then you leave it to him. Problem solved, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we saw Brissett was not that great last year. But, hey, you know what? He gets another year under Bill Belichick. Who knows? (laughs) They they started Brissett wasn't that great, but you don't have to be great in the AFC East. That's true. You just have to be okay. I don't know how the, they certainly didn't get worse because they really didn't lose anybody. No, they, they got better because they doubled down on Gronkowski power. <laughs> they won without Gronkowski for a large period too. So, yeah. so now they have Rob and Glenn, so they are ready to go. That, that, maybe that's where they got worse. Now they have too many Gronkowskis. The parties are going to get out of hand. Well, no, no, no. Maybe they can just separate one and say, yes, you're Gronkowski. Don't be like Rob. Vegas ain't all it's cracked up to be. Give, give him a little sit down the first couple weeks of the season. <laughs> Do the two look alike? Maybe they could, Maybe that's their plan is to do trick plays where they put Rob Gronkowski as the fullback. And they're like, oh, we have to card the tight end, Gronkowski. And then all of a sudden, Gronk does his thing. I don't know, maybe that's his plan. But I wouldn't put it past Bill Belichick to do that, by the way. Satan personified no hoodie himself. (laughs) Anything that we are looking forward to for their training camp, I mean. For them not to say a word. (laughs) Yeah, is Giselle's wife going to say anything, or Giselle going to say anything else? She's the only one who's uh, going to say anything meaningful. <laughs> I do I do think that, it, once again, that if there is a question for them, it's can, can, that, can that offensive line hold up again for him? Uh, you know, they did draft guys, but... That was a little bit of a problem for them last year. Have they really addressed that? And, you know, that secondary as well at times was 
has had its own issues. So, you know, I, it's it's definitely the line and and deep because you know offensively they kept everybody. So, other than uh, it's blunt, blunt finally got signed by somebody. So mm. he's gone, um. but. But, you know, you still got James White and Dion Lewis. Hopefully he doesn't break something else. I and don't know. I, I, I mean, hearing all this, I'm just thinking maybe my question mark is, all right, what's the number going to be on Vegas? Because other than that, where's the real intrigue in this case? Even with their offensive line issues. Well, I mean, this is the Patriots. Come on, like they're gonna get to the playoffs, barring you know Tom Brady going down, and even that. That's what. That's why I say things happen. Crowbars, incidences with groceries downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that sort of, you know, next week we'll have. Or not next week. Uh, Thursday we'll have a lot more because Dolphins and Bills have a lot more to talk about. Uh, so it won't just be one team that we're going at length with and then Patriots for taking, like Randy said, 10 seconds. But uh, when you're the Super Bowl champs and you you get lucky and keep a lot of people, mm-hmm. that's kind of what happens. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, uh, New England's over-under is at 12 and a half. No. Oh. Wow! You see, Sean, I can I restrained myself that time. I nearly said something that would have really made you have to put the explicit tag. I need a beverage. Okay, can uh, anybody guess what the Jets over under is? Four. Correct. Four and a half. Wow! <laughs> 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 Woo! That's being generous, maybe. They're tied with Cleveland for the lowest that I'm seeing right now. Wait, wow. what? <laughs> oh, and the 49ers. I didn't get down okay. yet. So the, so the 49ers, Browns, and Jets are all at the lowest at four and a half. So wait That's a worse. minute. Are they really giving Jacksonville like a six or something? <laughs> it, it's exactly six, sir. Um, you, you can live with that, right? Six and ten. Yes and no, but not for the reasons that you would think. <laughs> we'll get to it, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, we'll get to it. <laughs> we'll get to the, we're doing the AFC South last of the AFC teams, so that'll be in three weeks. But All right, so on Thursday when we cover the Dolphins and Bills, and then whatever news has possibly come out by then. Until then, and of course, Gary will be on when we uh, do Thursday. Uh Randy has to work, I'm sure. Yep. Uh, so it'll be uh, Eric, Gary, and I, and we'll get to talk about things. So should be fun. And until next week, hopefully, you know, you can let Eric know how much you enjoyed him at Squid Sportshead. You can uh, hit up Randy at Randy Isbell, and I'm at W Tim Sean. Of course, you can uh, follow us. At W Tim Network, where we post everything that gets posted on WTimNet.com, which is a website you should go visit. Uh, we are still, we're, we're gonna probably gonna start the football content here pretty soon. Uh, there is a lot of the other football uh, soccer content as the Gold Cup is about to start, and so we have uh, Gold Cup previews for all the teams, and of course there's the wrestling, uh, video games, and uh, entertainment podcast there for you too. And we'll uh, be seeing you uh, on uh, Thursday night, Friday morning. Until then, see you later, everybody. Peace.
Wrestling Podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.